my United States, Alaska. Welcome to Alaska. Find the truth. Everything you are about to read is true except for one of the sentences on this page. Which is true? True or false? The United States purchased Alaska from Great Britain in 1867. True or false? There are parts of Alaska where the sun doesn't rise for up to 10 weeks at a time. Find the answers in this book. Key facts. The capital is Juneau. The estimated population as of 2016 was 741,894. Its nickname is The Last Frontier. And the biggest cities are Anchorage, Juneau, and Fairbanks. This is Alaska. Utkuvik, formerly Barrow, Alaska, is the United States' most northerly city. Far north of the Arctic Circle, Utkuvik can go up to 10 weeks at a time without any sunlight. Keep an eye on the sky for the chance to see the Aurora Borealis or Northern Light. Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. At more than 19.6 million acres, this is the National Wildlife Refuge System's largest wilderness area. The refuge was created in 1960 to protect the land, water, plants, and wildlife. Denali National Park and Preserve. Located in South Central Alaska, this national park covers roughly 6 million acres. Visitors can experience tundra, forests, glaciers, and mountains and see a range of wildlife. Aluian Islands. This string of 14 large islands and more than 50 smaller ones extends from the Alaskan Peninsula. Parts of the Aleutian Islands are home to several native Alaskan communities. Other areas are perfect for hiking, fishing, or wildlife viewing. Chapter 1, Land and Wildlife. Everything about Alaska seems gigantic. Its territory is nearly one-fifth the size of all the other states combined. Denali, its highest point, is the tallest mountain in North America. There's even a glacier in Alaska that's larger than Rhode Island. The name Alaska comes from a local native word meaning the Great Land. And its famous nickname, The Last Frontier, hints at Alaska's vast and dramatic wilderness. Alaska contains more than 3 million lakes and 40% of all the surface water in the United States. A scenic state. Alaska is famous for its natural beauty. Traveling across the state, you'll see towering mountain peaks and active volcanoes. You'll also encounter wide open stretches of frozen tundra where no trees grow and ground is permafrost. In other areas, there are dense forests and swampy wetlands. Along the coast, you can glimpse at floating icebergs. They broke off of sheets of ice called glaciers, which cover huge areas of land. This map shows which areas are higher, yellow and red, and lower, green, across the state. A mighty mountain. The mountain named Denali is Alaska's tallest peak. In fact, with a height of 20,310 feet, it is the highest point in all of North America. For many years, Denali was known as Mount McKinley. It was named after President William McKinley in 1897. In 2015, however, its original native Alaskan name was restored. As the main attraction of Denali National Park and Preserve, this incredible mountain draws many visitors to the state. Don't forget your coat about, with about one third of the state located above the Arctic Circle. Alaska can be a very cold place. Temperatures below zero degrees Fahrenheit are common. Strong winds can make it feel even colder. 
However, the weather isn't always chilly in Alaska. Some In some parts of the state, such as the south and southeast, summers can be warm and pleasant. This is where most Alaskans live. Snowmobiles, also called snow machines, are often used in areas with no roads. Daylight and darkness. The most northerly parts of Alaska are close to the North Pole. During the winter, this part of the planet tilts away from the sun. In the far north, Alaskans experience up to 67 days in a row with no sunlight. During summer, the North Pole tilts toward the sun. This can cause up to 80 straight days when the sun does not set. Even at night, the sun shines. Because of this, Alaska is sometimes called the land of the midnight sun. Alaskan baseball teams play a game at midnight without electric lights as the sun shines. Plants in the permafrost. Tundra covers about half of Alaska. Much of the tundra is located to the west and the north and high in mountains. Trees and other plants cannot survive here. Instead, a range of bushes, wildflowers, and other plants grow close to the ground. Wild berries grow in many places. In contrast to the tundra, about one quarter of the state is forested. Here, you can see a variety of trees. Evergreens, such as spruce and cedar, are especially common. A pink grosbeak feeds on mountain ash berries in Anchorage. Firewood blossom. Alaska's animals. Many animals live in Alaska's rugged wilderness. Huge brown and grizzly bears live in the interior while polar bears inhabit the far north. Moose, caribou, and wolves are common. Thick fur helps these mammals survive the harsh winter. Marine mammals such as seals, otters, walruses, and whales can be spotted along the coast. These animals have layers of fat called blubber to keep them warm in the cold ocean waters. Unlike other deer, both male and female caribou have antlers. Chapter two, government. Alaska's capital is called Juneau, far to the southeast in the panhandle region of the state. Juneau is isolated from other Alaskan towns. There are no roads leading into the city. The only way to get there is to fly or ride a ferry. Despite the capital's remote location, it plays a central role in Alaskan life. This is where the state's leaders gather to create new laws and make important decisions about the state's future. Juneau was made the territorial capital in 1900 and the seat of Alaska's government in 1906. State Government Basics. Alaska's state government is divided into three branches. The executive branch, led by the governor, carries out the state's laws. The legislative branch writes the laws. The state's Senate and House of Representatives form this branch. Alaska's courts make up the judicial branch. The highest court is the Supreme Court. Its five justices meet at various times in Anchorage, Fairbanks, Juneau, and sometimes other communities. This lets them hear cases where the original trials took place. Alaska is divided into units called boroughs. These boroughs cover only about one third of the state. The remaining two thirds of the state have few residents and aren't divided into political units. Alaska also includes regional and village native corporations. These are businesses that function much like independent tribal governments elsewhere in the country. The corporations control 44 million acres of land. They work to provide money and land to native Alaskans. Members of a native corporation wear traditional clothing during a meeting in Sitka. Alaska in the national government. Each state elects officials to represent it in the U.S. Congress. 
Like every state, Alaska has two senators. The U.S. House of Representatives relies on a state's population to determine its numbers. With few residents, Alaska has only one representative in the House. Every four years, states vote on the next U.S. president. Each state is granted a number of electoral votes based on its members in Congress. With two senators and one representative, Alaska has three electoral votes. Two senators and one representative, three electoral votes. With its small population, Alaska plays only a small part in presidential elections. Representing Alaska. Elected officials in Alaska represent a population with a range of interests, lifestyles, and backgrounds. You can see by the graph here that most of the population, 61.5% are Caucasian, 6.3% are Asian, 3.9% are African American, 7.2% are two or more races, 14.8% are Native American or Alaska Native, 7% are Hispanic, and 1.3% are Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander. 7% of Alaskans were born in other countries, 63% own their own homes, two-thirds live in cities, 16% of the state citizens speak a language other than English at home. 92% of the population graduated from high school and 28% have higher degrees. The big truth, what represents Alaska? States choose specific animals, plants, and objects to represent the values and characteristics of the land and its people. Find out why these symbols were chosen to represent Alaska or discover surprising curiosities about them. The Seal of Alaska. Alaska State Steel was designed in 1910. Its snowy mountains, ocean water, and other features were chosen to show the beauty of Alaska's landscape. The Flag. 13-year-old Benny Benson won a contest to design Alaska state flag in 1927, when Alaska was still a territory. The background is blue for Alaska's sky and its state flower, the forget-me-not. On the backdrop are the Great Bear Constellation, representing strength and the Northern Star, which stands for Alaska's future and position as the northernmost state. Jade is the state gemstone. Its large amounts of this green gemstone can be found underground and within Alaska's mountains. The four-spot skimmer dragonfly is the state insect. This dragonfly was chosen as the state insect by Alaskan school children in 1995. The moose is the state mammal. The largest deer in the world, these enormous creatures can be found throughout much of Alaska. The forget-me-not is the state flower. These beautiful flowers grow high up in Alaska's mountainside meadows. The willow ptarmigan is the state bird. This bird's feathers are white during winter, but change to brown in warmer weather. And the dog mushing is the state sport. Once a common form of transportation in Alaska, Dog mushing has become a very popular sport. Chapter three, the history. Thousands of years ago, the sea level around the world was much lower than it is today. As a result, land between Asia and Alaska, which is now the body of water called the Bering Strait, was exposed. People were able to simply walk from what is now Eastern Russia into what has become Alaska. In about 10,000 BCE, the first people to come to Alaska crossed this now vanished land bridge. Dog sledding developed among native groups in Alaska and Canada and is still used today. Paleo-Indians. The prehistoric people who first settled Alaska were known as Paleo-Indians. They survived mainly by hunting Alaska's many animals. 
In addition to bears, whales, and other animals still living today, they hunted the enormous and now extinct woolly mammoth. The furs of these animals kept helped keep the Paleo Indians warm in their icy new home. People used the animals' bones to make weapons and tools and their skins to build boats, developing cultures. Over time, the Paleo Indians separated into different groups. They spread across the land that would become Alaska and developed unique cultures. For example, the Athabascans were tradition have traditionally lived in Alaska's interior near waterways where they could fish. They moved from place to place often and traveled using boats and dog sleds. The Aleuts lived along Alaska's southern west peninsula and on the nearby Aleutian Islands. They fished from boats. The Inupiats lived mainly in the northern and northwestern part of Alaska. The Yupiks were found in Southwest, in the Southwest, where they rarely stayed in one place, moving constantly as they tracked their prey. The Tilligs lived in the south southeastern Panhandle, where the Hadians lived nearby on Prince of Wales Island. These and other native cultures still survive in Alaska today. This map shows the approximate areas where different native Alaskan groups were living when the Europeans arrived. Visitors from the West. In 1741, Russian naval officer Vitus Bering sailed east across the sea from Russia in search of new lands. He and his men landed in Alaska and found a bounty of valuable animals and other natural resources. Soon, ships were regularly traveling back and forth from Alaska to collect furs and other goods from Alaska to sell. The Russians often clashed with the native Alaskans and even forced the Iliots to help them hunt local animals. Alaska and America. Russia controlled Alaska for many decades, but in the early 1800s, British and American fur trappers began moving into the region. At first, these three region nations signed a treaty agreeing to share Alaska. Russia and Great Britain agreed on a border, now the Alaskan Canada, Alaska Canada, Canada border between Russian and British lands in 1825. Over time, the fur trade became less profitable. In 1867, the United States offered to purchase Alaska for $7.2 million, which is approximately $120 million in today's money. William Seward, the main person behind the Alaska purchase was U.S. Secretary of State William Seward. Seward believed the land would be a valuable source of supplies to the United States. He knew it was bursting with wood, fish, and a variety of minerals. With the fur trade slowing down, however, many Americans did not see the value of the purchase. Seward's folly became the popular nickname of the new territory. Alaska, however, soon proved these people wrong. Top hats and canes were common attire for many Americans in the 1800s, and a trapper displays a string of 26 fox furs in the 1800s. The 49th State. Beginning in 1861, yet another valuable recess was discovered in Alaska, gold. In a rush to get rich from this new discovery, tens of thousands of people flowed into the state. Some searched for gold while others established businesses to serve them. Towns and cities sprang up and railroads were built to make travel across the state easier. By 1900, Alaska's population had doubled to more than 63,000 people. The gold rush brought thousands of men to Alaska with the dream of becoming rich. Many of them died in the effort. On January 3rd, 1959, Alaska officially became the 49th state. In the following decade, people discovered huge amounts of oil underground. This led to another economic boom as businesses rushed to build oil wells and pipelines. 
Many jobs were created and more new residents poured into the state. Oil remains a driving force in the economy, though some people worry about drilling, transportation, and possible spills harming the environment. This map shows the official boundaries of Alaska when it became a state in 1959. Chapter 4, Culture. Alaskan culture is a blend of influences from Native Alaskans and the many people who have come to the state more recently. For example, Native Alaskan music is very popular in the state, and many musicians combine traditional sounds with more modern styles. The state's rugged landscape is another influence on its culture. Writers such as Jack London have told many tales of adventure set in the Alaskan wilderness. Ice fishers cut a hole through the frozen surface of a body of water to catch fish. Sports in the snow. While Alaskans enjoy popular sports such as baseball and hockey, the state is also home to events you won't find anywhere else in the country. Alaska's state sport is dog mushing or dog sled racing. The annual Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race is the state's biggest sporting event. It draws fans and competitors from around the world. The 1,100-mile race winds through the Alaskan wilderness and takes up to two weeks to finish. More than 1,000 dogs participate in each Iditarod race. The Iditarod has been held every year since 1973. Time to celebrate. Alaskans enjoy many celebrations and traditions that are unique to their state. Each July, the state hosts the World Eskimo Indian Olympics, where Native Alaskan athletes compete in a variety of events based on traditional Alaskan survival skills. On October 18th, Alaskans celebrate Alaska Day, a holiday that marks the anniversary of the state's transfer from Russia to the United States. An athlete is flung into the air using a blanket at the World Eskimo Indian Olympics. Alaskans at work. As has always been, Alaska's economy is driven by the state's wealth of natural resources. Many people are employed in the oil industry. Others work for mining companies. The state's many mines produce metals such as gold, silver, copper, and tin. Alaska is one of the world's Top producers of zinc concentrate. Fishing is another big business. Alaska fishers produce more than 5 billion pounds of seafood each year. Fishers haul in a net full of salmon off the coast of Alaska. Alaska fishers often spend two to three months at sea without a break. A changing economy. Today, we know that using fossil fuels such as oil is harmful to the environment. Because of this, many people are searching for ways to use less oil. In addition, there has been an increase in competition from other energy sources in the country, such as wind and solar power. This has had a big effect on Alaska's economy. Since 1998, the state's oil production has decreased by 75%. This means there is less money flowing into the state. Because Alaska has much lower taxes than other states. It relies on income from oil to fund the government. Decreasing oil production also means fewer jobs in the oil industry. As the economy continues to change, Alaskans will continue to look elsewhere for income. The Trans-Alaska Pipeline carries an average of 1.8 million barrels of oil through 800 miles of pipes each day eating in Alaska. Seafood is a big part of the local cuisine in Alaska. Freshly caught salmon and Alaskan king crab legs are local favorites. Blueberries, cranberries, and strawberries all grow in wild Alaska. Some native Alaskans combine them with animal fat or fish to make a unique style of ice cream. You can see the recipe for Alaskan ice cream down here. It includes vegetable shortening, sugar, water, and mixed berries. The Last Frontier. 
With its remote location and strong native culture, Alaska is unlike anywhere else in the United States. Traveling to the last frontier isn't always easy, but as any resident will tell you, the experience of being there is well worth the effort. The stunning natural landscapes and the Alaskan way of life are a big part of the draw for residents and local visitors alike. Hikers stand atop a glacier at Wrangell St. Elias National Park in South Central Alaska. Did you know that Malaspina Glacier, the largest glacier in Alaska, covers about 1,500 square miles. That is larger than the state of Rhode Island. Ancient people in Alaska sometimes chop down trees using beaver teeth. Teachers from all over the country travel to Alaska's most remote rural areas to teach children at bush schools. Alaska is home to 24 national park areas covering 52, sorry, 54,654,052 acres, which is about 13% of the state. In 1989, an oil tanker crashed into a reef in Alaska's Prince William Sound, releasing 11 million gallons of oil into the water. Because towns in Alaska are so spread out, about one in 58 of the state's people has a license to fly an airplane. Alaskans have special nicknames for different kinds of wind. The Chinook is a warm wind in early spring or late winter. The Taku is a cold, powerful Arctic wind. And the Wiliwawa is a sudden, unexpected gust. Did you find the truth? False. The United States purchased Alaska from Great Britain in 1867. True. There are parts of Alaska where the sun doesn't rise for up to 10 weeks at a time.